So a year and a half ago, all of my touring was canceled. And I think that all the musicians around the world found that we had a little bit more time on our hands. And seeing as how I was going to be away from the stage for a while, and um, I wasn't going to have the obligation to perform for the foreseeable future, I decided to um, do something that I wanted to do for a long time, which was switch up all the equipment that I was playing and uh, make it so all the equipment that I was playing really worked together in tandem. And so I went to a bunch of different saxophone companies and I was fortunate enough to have a lot of options from these companies that were offering that I either play one of their saxophones or that they create a signature model of a Chad LB saxophone. And I was definitely tempted by some offers, but for me, it felt like the right thing to do um, to actually start from scratch with someone who I really trusted as an artist, saxophonist, and craftsman. And so I decided to go to Jack and, and we had this crazy idea of, you know, partnering on a new venture where we would start from scratch and create a saxophone, create a mouthpiece, create reeds, and create a ligature um, that I would play on that would all work together. And by starting from scratch, um, we had the opportunity to um, really get into the nitty gritty of the technical side of things. And with this um, past year and a half, we were able to get into great detail um, with creating all of this equipment. So I thought we could get into that today. We have Jack here with us and it probably makes the most sense to start with the saxophones. <laughs> we have the Nexus One saxophone, which you see here, and we have the Nexus Select saxophone that both Jack and I are holding. And so let's start with the saxophones. Let's get into that first. Jack, uh, the first thing that you wanted to do with this, I know, was to make it light. Uh, so many new horns these days are just so freaking heavy. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, tell us about that to start. Sure, yeah, I remember in one of our earlier conversations, you were talking about the idea of resonance and how you had played like a lot of modern horns and even, you know, a handful of vintage horns that just didn't, have that certain, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like aliveness under your fingers. And there's something really to be said, I think, about feeling connected to your instrument. I mean, it changes the way you play. It changes the feedback that you get in your hands and your body when you're using anything. And there's a lot of great horns out there that maybe don't have that feeling that still can produce a great sound. So what did you do, technically speaking, to make this so much lighter than other new horns out there? So I remember when the first horn started showing up to start prototyping with, and it was like it was like a chop shop. I mean, basically, I took a, you know, oxyacetylene torch and a hacksaw and just started removing all of the parts that I've seen on modern horns that I don't think are really necessary that are just adding more weight and you know detracting from the overall vibration of the horn so the first thing is we took the high up sharp off you know started removing some of the bracing like along the bow here some of the guards that in my opinion don't really add anything in terms of structural integrity and they're just again decreasing from resonance so at the end of the day we had basically a pile of brass sitting on the bench and we got out our postal scale and started measuring all the vintage selmers in the shop and put the nexus on there and we were actually under the weight of all of them and what was really exciting beyond that was just to start playing the horn versus the stock one where we hadn't modified anything other than the weight and the difference was immediate. I mean, there was just so much more feedback, you know, under your fingers, um, you know, with the lighter weight horn uh, that we were all just kind of blown away that just that one element in and of itself would have such a significant impact on the feedback for the player behind the instrument. Right. 
And then from there, uh, the approach that you took to the neck, um, I think makes a huge difference in just how free blowing it is. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, once again, inspired by you, you know, we had talked about something that had a really fast response, something that had brilliance, but still plenty of core and flexibility. And I have had a lot of experience messing around with, with necks and in particular neck angles. Mm -hmm. And what's unique about the Nexus neck itself is that the angle is higher up than just about any other modern neck you're gonna see on the market. And as a result, your airstream is blowing more downward into the body tube as opposed to out and across. And there's just an instant decrease in resistance when you do that. Mm -hmm. In addition, kind of following along the design language of the horn itself, we removed all the bracing. So it's a very lightweight neck, you know, not to the point of, of again, sacrificing any kind of structural integrity, but just, you know, to get as much resonance out of the neck as possible. So the last element mm -hmm. is a small one, but it, but it does make a difference is actually the end ring at the end of the mm -hmm. neck. And and most traditional necks, they have a straight taper, which in the interior of the connection to the mouthpiece is going to create a certain amount of resistance because it's going to have to step down to the bore of the neck. With the Nexus neck, we took it one step further and we're actually using a chamfered or beveled edge so that as it enters into the mouthpiece, uh, it almost connects directly with the bore. And as a result, it adds a little bit more brilliance. It's a little bit quicker response because you're not having any decreased resistance at that very important connection to the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. All right, and then obviously I wanted to feel comfortable ergonomically on the saxophone. I didn't want to feel like I was limited at all. Um, a lot of new horns, they're just such a beast to get around. You get them in your hands and they're just so freaking big. And so it was really important to me that I could just put my hands on this thing and feel like I could fly. Um, and so we worked a lot on the setup and uh, the action of these things. And um, it's, it's, you know, been a process over the past year and a half, just making sure it, you know, fits and flies exactly the way I want to, you know, when I'm moving my hands around the horn. So. What were some of the uh, things that you took into account here when, when setting this up? Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the important ones is just like the key heights themselves, like mm -hmm. understanding basic venting of the saxophone, because I think one of the things that's important to you and certainly is to me is just homogeny in terms of response across the horn. So like mm -hmm. really dialing in the key heights, which are different, you know, mm -hmm. on, on horn to horn and model to model. Mm -hmm. So it took a minute to like really figure out what's going to work best for you mm -hmm. across the entire horn so that every note feels uh, as similar as possible in terms mm -hmm. of overall resistance and tone. So the second thing would be the action itself, the spring tension. And a lot of modern horns, you get them out of the box. And, and like you said, they, they really feel very stiff. They don't feel like they have any personal personality mm -hmm. and so you know we found that like for you you like a relatively light spring tension mm -hmm. so each of the horns that we're setting up you know really has more of that broken in feel like we mm -hmm. want this to feel like a horn that you've played for years as soon as you get out of the box so adjusting mm -hmm. the tension to be even but to be lighter than I think what you're going to find on most modern saxophones is just you know part of the setup on these instruments mm -hmm. So another thing that's really important to me and near and dear to my heart as a repair technician is just the idea of the, of the key work literally being tight across the horn in terms of the mechanics, because one of the things that causes problems down the line is having, you know, wear in the key work. So we work really, really consciously uh, to make sure that all of the key work on the horn is, you know, better than factory, basically, mm -hmm. when it comes out in terms of the tightness across the instrument of the keys themselves. Right. And, and with that in mind, one thing that we're doing uh, with the release of the Nexus horns that we're really excited about is um, I'm actually going to play every single saxophone that we distribute. It's really important to us that we have the best possible quality control. So not only, you know, will Jack be hand finishing every saxophone to ensure the best quality, but I'm actually going to play it just to make sure that for me as the player, it feels right. All right, and then lastly, uh, we wanted to make sure that this saxophone was built with the highest quality materials through and through. Needless to say, there are a lot of saxophones being put out on the market these days with, um, I'll put it nicely and I'll say subpar <laughs> materials. And you know, so Jack is hand assembling all of these horns at his shop um, in the USA. But we wanted to make sure that he started with the best quality materials um, when he's doing that. So could you speak to the materials that we're using in this process? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so again, my background mm -hmm. is in repair. And mm -hmm. one of the things that was like a constant search for me 
was finding what was going to last the longest in terms of not only just the pads, but the other materials don't get talked about a lot, like the corks and the felts, everything that's going to control the regulation, and more importantly for the consumer, the reliability of their instrument. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically what we have on this horn is an exact uh, setup that I would do on any vintage saxophone that came across my bench for a full mechanical restoration in terms of, you know, using the highest quality pads that we possibly can from Italy. You know, all of our materials in terms of those corks and felts are, you know, of the, of the least compressible nature, of the quietest nature, so that this horn is going to stay in the regulation that it comes out of the box in for years and years to come. Because uh, we want people to look at this as an investment, as something that, you know, is going to last them well and is going to be able to be repaired in the future. I mean, this is not, this is a lifelong instrument. This is an instrument that you're going to make, uh, you know, your own history on. It's not something that, you know, you're going to throw away after a couple of years. You're going to want to keep using it. And so we want to make sure that we're providing, you know, the best absolute quality in order to ensure that, you know, you're, you're, you're getting the most for your money in terms of your investment. Right. And with the investment in mind, it's, it's cool to consider that we're, we're using raw brass through and through with the silver plating on the Nexus Select horns. And so with that in mind, these horns are going to age. And like the one that I've been playing on is already aging um, in the same way that vintage horns have mm. aged. So we do really expect that these horns will play better and better as you break them in. Um, you know, I've been playing this guy for uh, about a year now. You can tell. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it's cool to see the aging process and that it honestly feels better and better the more I break it in, the more I play it, and the more it ages with me, which is pretty hip. Yeah, not only that, but the thing is, over the years, each one of these saxophones is going to become unique. Mm -hmm. Every Nexus saxophone will, you know, kind of display its own story from the owner. I think we're mm -hmm. We're really intrigued by the idea of vintage instruments because they already have a history. But what's cool about these horns is that you, you're going to develop that history. And as a result, over the years, every single one is going to have a unique personality and a unique aesthetic. Great. So as you can see, uh, we really put, um, as cheesy as it sounds, we put our heart and soul into this thing. You know, um, I never thought that, and nor did Jack ever think that, you know, uh, we would be involved in the process of actually making a saxophone but it has been so rewarding and so fulfilling to really fine tune the best instrument um that there is nothing beats the saxophone it's the best you know obviously everybody watching this video probably agrees but anyway uh you know it was it was really special to uh, take an instrument that is you know so near and dear to our hearts and and build it in the exact way that we wanted to and you know um i'm just really excited that now finally this thing that we've been putting um, so much time and energy into is now um, going to be something that you guys can play as well. So yeah, with all that in mind, you know, just thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you found the video to be informative. If you haven't already, please uh, make sure to check out nexussax.com and uh, see more about the saxophones as well as the mouthpiece and the reeds that we'll be telling you about more in future videos. All right, so Chad LB and Jack Fanukin here. We will see you guys next time. Thanks so much.